Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Good day to you, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. We have a number of people who listen to us on their way to work. Dear friend, I'm going to encourage everybody else to reach over and pick up their own copy of God's Word as mine sits open to the book of Leviticus, chapter 23. But if you're driving a car, you leave your hands on the wheel and keep your eyes on the road, but keep your ears attuned to the broadcast. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you can, not only get your Bible, but get something on which you can jot some notes. We have had a good time studying here our way, chapter by chapter, through the book of Leviticus, a book that rarely, frankly, gets taught, and I think you and I understand why. But Leviticus 23, get your Bible and join there as I get ready to teach from there. I've got a gospel tract here in my hand as well. This one's entitled Peace in Terminal Illness. I'll say something about it here in just a moment, but let me lead into the broadcast time this way. I was a teenager during the late 60s, and those were rather raucous years, as many of you know. The hippie movement was in full swing, and also Eastern religions were becoming very popular. The singing group, the Beatles, did a lot to promote Eastern religious ideas, but that led to the popularizing of this thing called transcendental meditation. Now, the practice of transcendental meditation and it being uh, in the news brought on a good discussion among God's people about biblical meditation. I remember very distinctly as a junior high student hearing my pastor say something like this. He said, why do Eastern religious people practice meditating on their God and their religious ideas, and we believers in the true and living God rarely practice meditating on him? I thought it was a good question. Well, I say all that because Leviticus 23, in the chapter God sets out in his code book, that's exactly what the book of Leviticus is, God sets out a, the special times when the Jews were to meditate on the meaning of their existence as a nation. Now, that's not a bad habit for God's people to do in any era. So tell me, when was the last time you and the people at your congregation met together, and you came together for the purpose of pondering who you are through Christ, pondering what God wants from you as a local body, and why in the world do you exist as a holy people? Now, for most of us, it's probably been far too long since we did that kind of meditating, but it's never too late to start doing the right thing, is it? Let's get to our Bibles, Leviticus, please, chapter 23. I mentioned the gospel tract here in my hand, Peace and Terminal Illness. Now, this is a gospel tract written by our founder. Let me read you how it begins. It says this, on June 29, 1995, a doctor said to me, you have cancer. It has spread to your spine and ribs. So I know how you feel if you've had terminal illness. No one is prepared to receive that kind of report, and it goes on from there. He goes on to describe the fact that it's a devastating bit of news unless unless you know that when you leave this life, you go straight to heaven. Oh, dear friend, if you were to die today, do you know for 100% sure that you'd go to heaven? If you don't, get our tracks. Get this track, peace and terminal illness, because, friend, a whole lot of people do die through a terminal illness, but a lot of people die in car accidents and other ways, and they have no forewarning. 
But do you know for sure if you were to die today, you'd go to heaven? Here's a great tool to share the gospel, peace and terminal illness. At the end of the program, my announcer will tell you how to contact us. If you'll do that, give us your name and your mailing address. We'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks, including this one, Peace and Terminal Illness. Please do that today. Or you can just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. If your Bible's open to Leviticus and chapter 23, I begin reading at verse 4. Here's what the Bible says. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye shall eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days, and in the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. I'm going to stop right there, please. Now, Leviticus 23 is a listing of the seven special feast times, festival times, which God set up for the Jewish people. At these seven festival times, the Jewish people were to congregate there at the tabernacle. Chapter 23 opens with simply stating that the Jews obviously were to observe the weekly Sabbath day, and that was on Saturday. The first three verses talk about that. But as you saw, as I read through verses four through eight, the focus quickly changed turns here to these seven yearly feasts. Now, I have found for me the best way to arrange these feasts and to think of them logically is this. The first two feasts that we read about here, Passover and Unleavened Bread, these two were to remember God's past, God's past work of redemption and giving the people a new start. The next two feasts, those are first fruits and Pentecost, these next two would help the people remember God's present provision in their lives. And the last three, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Day of Atonement, and the Tabernacles, Feast of Tabernacles, those three focused on God's future blessings for the people of the Jews. Now, that's how I arrange it. Now, coming back here to verses 4 to 8, these again deal with the feast days of Passover and unleavened bread. And as I said, these two feasts caused the people to meditate and remember about God's past redeeming work in their lives and giving them a new start as a nation. Passover was the work of God. You know that. It's the work of God where he freed Israel from their enslavement in Egypt. It was a very In a very real sense, Passover was the most important feast of all. It meant that the people were delivered. They were redeemed, that is, bought with a price, redeemed from death and bondage. Over in the New Testament book of 1 Corinthians, there in chapter 5 and verse 7, if we were to turn there, we would read these words. I'm quoting now, for even Christ, our Passover, the hour there, it refers to New Testament believers, for even Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. So, feast number one commemorated salvation. It commemorated redemption. Now, beloved, there are a lot of denominational groups out there. You know it, and I know it. Every once in a while, I say this, that I am a Baptist. I'm a Baptist guy. Now, you may be some other group. Now, listen, these groups do have differences on some issues, but... But if you and I are not personally saved, it doesn't matter one iota. Knowing Christ as Savior, being born again, being redeemed, being saved from our sin, that is the most important issue. Now, my being a Baptist does not make me right with God. It's merely a doctrinal label. My salvation is not a Baptist thing. It's not a Methodist thing. It's not a Nazarene thing. It's not a Lutheran thing. It's not a Presbyterian thing. 
thing. It's not a whatever thing of any label like that. Salvation is a God thing. Salvation is not found in a label, but in a person. That person, one person, is Jesus, the Christ, the Son of a living God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. It's not a Baptist thing. It's a person of Jesus Christ. We have a Savior. It's a person, Jesus, the Christ. You and I must personally receive Christ or else we have no Passover. We have no salvation. We have no redemption. We are still, without Christ as Savior, we're still bound in our sin, bound into eternal death, and headed for the lake of fire. I don't know how to make that any more straightforward and blunt to you, but I need to be blunt because unless a person is born again by Jesus Christ, the person of Christ, you have no Passover. You have no redemption from your sin. Now, these verses here also talk about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They're in verses 6, 7, and 8. This feast commemorates God's provision of sanctification. Now, listen, the word sanctification, and by the way, that word sanctification come from the same root word as the word sanctuary. You know what a sanctuary is. We go to a church, we go to a sanctuary building. That's a building that's been dedicated and set apart for the holy purpose of worshiping God. The word sanctification means that people that are saved have been set apart for the holy purpose of serving God. Now, God did not simply take the Jews out of Egypt, did he? He took them not only out, he took them away from Egypt. Please remember that. He separated the Jews from their old life of slavery and death and bondage. He took them to a new place to teach them to live a new life. Israel left Egypt with bread that had no leaven in it, had no time to rise. It did not look like their normal bread. It had no element, as I said, of leaven in it. Their bread was God's provision for their journey to a new home. And so every year uh, or for a week, they ate unleavened bread. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6, 7, and 8, New Testament believers are called upon to live clean lives for God. Lives described there in that passage as being lives of no leaven. Now, leaven was a picture, according to 1 Corinthians 5, of a picture of sinfulness and corruption that's got to be gone in our lives. Oh, dear believer friend, when God saves a person, he sets them free from sin's bondage, but he does so much more. He saves them by his mighty hand, and then he provides what they need to live a new life for his glory. The Jews ate a new kind of bread, unleavened bread. We in the New Testament era eat a new kind of bread as well. We feed on Jesus the bread of life. We feed on his word because the Bible says man shall not live by bread, that is physical bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. There's more, but here's the point. Israel was delivered by God and provided for at every turn And God brought them to the promised land of victory. As we are delivered by God through salvation, he gives us all things that pertain to life and godliness, and all this is in his son, then we got to ask, how long has it been since you and I meditated on our salvation and on the truth that you and I were saved for a new life? All that's dependent upon you having a Passover, you being born again, you being saved from your sin through Jesus Christ. If you've never received him as your savior, right now is the right time. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, 
Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him 